அவன் எழுதுறோம் என் சாக்லேட் ஃபுட் Uh, good afternoon everybody it's uh, it's a uh, it's a real honor for me uh, to be invited by uh, Assami India thank you so much and i would like to thank the organizing committee and uh, i hope we can come to and visit india during the next assami meeting uh, in june i am going to speak about the shark foot and the ankle can we save the limb We all know that the diabetes, diabetes mellitus is the major global uh, epidemic. A missing early diagnosis can lead to severe complications. So can you imagine that this simple and the so-called innocent fracture, innocent fissure, when three months you can have this picture if you don't treat the patient, the patient in the proper way? And don't forget that with innocent fractures, you can have this soft tissue injury, closed soft tissue injury, which is usually underestimated. When we talk about charcot arthropathy, they always talk about the protocol of treatment. We're not going to talk about this. We are going to talk about neglected or complicated cases of charcot arthropathy. So if you want to talk, we are going to present such cases. You see neglected cases with bone gap, infected, dislocated ankle. You see this osteomyelitis. You know, so we are talking about these cases. And if you want to go to the English literature, the English school in North America and the Europe, you will find nothing. They, they never talk about neglected cases because almost they don't have neglected cases. The problem with these neglected cases is that when they go to the plastic surgeon or the general surgeon or some orthopedic surgeons, they talk to them about amputation. When they talk to them about amputation, they have, because they have chronic ulcer, they have chronic infection, they have dislocated joints, They always tell the patient, it's a life-saving operation. Is it really a life-saving operation? So with this patient, 15-year-old boy, and with this charcot, joints and severe infection, they ask it, they ask it for amputation and they, because this is life-saving operation. So again, is it really a life-saving operation? Why amputation is a life-saving operation? They always claim for the vascularity. But in fact, usually preserve it and the peripheral pulses may be even pounding. So it's not the matter of vascularity. Now we are going to discuss it. Is it really a life-saving operation or is it hasting death? Look at this. analysis and systematic review the survival factors predicting mortality after major and minor lower limb amputations the mortality rate at one and four years after amputation after major amputation 33 to 65 percent a minor amputation 18 to 45 percent of pain again the over Overall, five-year mortality rate after amputation ranges between 25, 29 to 69% following minor amputations and 52% to 80% for patients with major amputation. So it's not, it's not life-saving. Amputation in this case, it's not life-saving at all. It has to death. Recent systematic review again reported the same results. So limb salvage in this population is especially important, given that five-year mortality rate in diabetic patients after lower extremity amputation is 39% to 68%. You see, it's not just one paper. Almost all the papers stated that doing amputation for such cases can hasten this. It's not a life-saving operation. So if you have the option between amputation and limb salvage, we choose the limb salvage. You can do tibio-tailor 
or tibiocalcaneal, you see here, tibiocalcaneal or tibiotalar fusion. You see here, tibiotalar fusion. We start with children. In this patient with this 10 years old child with type one diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes, she had charcot ankle on both sides, severe changes. And we used a lazar principle of compression distraction or the bloodless technique. So there was no debridement in children, just a bloodless technique, putting the frame on repeated cycles of compression distraction till we got fusion. In this case, we have fibrous union. It's not rigid on the left side. Look to the right side. Again, compression distraction. And you have complete union. And here, stable fibrous union. Using the bloodless technique. And this 60 year old female, overweight, uncontrolled diabetes, infection and ulcer, and this dislocated ankle. And this. We did debridement as usual. We do debridement, primary wound closure, frame application, partial reduction of the ankle. And we put the frame on and then we do gradual reduction for residual equinus. Why didn't we correct it acutely 100% for fear of the tethering of the vessels or the neurovascular bond? You see gradual correction of the equinus deformity. The frame evolution. For such cases now, we have changed the frame because of the high rate of pentrach infection. Why high rate of pentrach infection? You, you know, with these cases, neglected cases, it's always due to uncontrolled diabetes. So if you have a patient with uncontrolled diabetes for 15 years and you operate them on him, don't expect the patient to have to have uh, to have real control of the diabetes. It's you know he's going he's not going to change. So we're going to have pentrach infection again. Also marked swelling. So we do more levels of fixation, different size of rings, more pins and wires, early removals of the infected wire in the outpatient clinic, and the multiple wires. You see here we have three levels: hydroxyapatite coated half pins, three wires in each one, and we have a fourth level. You see many levels, three sizes of rings. And we continue the correction. So we have the correction here. Then during the removal, we put multiple wires, retrograde. Why? Because we think we need more time. We need more time. We remove the frame after four months because of the pentrach infection. We put many wires here to stimulate the union. And we put the patient in the cast, a special type of cast you see here. This is an empty part of the cast. And this is the shape of the cast. This is high and this is high and the, the wires, look at the wires. So to allow the patient fluid bearing immediately after removal. Look to this patient and we have fluid bearing with the cast. after removal and using this special cast on. And this is again the shape. Then we exchange the cast after two months by putting another cast. And after application, we remove the wires. And we think during application and removal, we stimulate the union. You see the picture with the wires. And this is after removal. No ulcer. And this is after full op, you see, complete union. Tibio Taylor fusion. Now, if you have a chronic osteomyelitis, and this is gap, the brightment and just compression. You see, complete union. And look to the skin. Again, the brightment and the compression. But here is fibrous union. 
but stable. Longitudinal bone transport, we have a big gap. We do corticotomy and bone transport. If you have a charcot foot, like this picture, we do transverse bone transport. This segment, multiple drill holes, it's about 15 centimeters by two centimeters. We do multiple drill holes, half pins in this segment. Then we do distraction, transverse distraction. This is the picture after one week of transverse bone transport. After one month of transverse bone transport, you see, two months, closure of the wound, and three months, complete healing after transverse bone transport. See, complete healing. And this is the picture after three years. So this is two years follow up, you see the picture. Then the other side, he came after three years, was also on the other side, we did the bridement. Again, the bridement, transverse bone transport of the right side, see, transverse bone transport, was follow up. You see the segment, we pushed the segment one millimeter per day, Medially, and this is healing. Remember both sides, see the picture, and during follow up, both sides, right side and left side. So we treat it one three years after the other, they have the same problem. You see the tibia on both sides, this left side and this is the right side. Remember the prophylactic treatment in cases which control diabetes. Remember that minor trauma to the ankle and foot in diabetic patients has to be investigated and treated properly and carefully. Remember that amputation in diabetic patient is not a life-saving operation in such cases. It can hasten death. If you have neglected charcot arthropathy and you have to decide between amputation and limb salvage, we go for limb salvage. The flow of tension stress, the Elizaro flow. Bone transport can be a good alternative for amputation, like this one. You see this charcot ankle. You can do bone transport, lengthening at the same time. In conclusion, it's not just the Lazar frame. You have to choose the methods. In children, the bloodless technique is valid. The bridement compression, distraction, compression in case of infection, longitudinal bone transport, transverse bone transport, the bridement, gradual correction of the deformity or dislocation. So it's the method, it's not just the frame. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful talk. Now, I request a question from the panel. Thank you very much, Professor Hosni, for a fantastic presentation. I'm really amazed to see the results. Uh, can I have one question? Uh, instead of putting wires, why not put a retrograde nail? What is the advantage of putting multiple intramedullary wires after? of the frame. Hello? Yes, I, I didn't get it. You mean half pins or your intramedullary wires? Yes. You, 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 I didn't get it. You mean, uh, um, you mean interlocking nail audible? or something? Audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Why, why not a retrograde nail from the calcareous? Yes, we've, uh, the problem, you know, you know, I see only the complicated cases. I've seen cases with retrograde enteral medullary uh, interlocking nail or something with terrible infection. 
So perhaps um, because I see only the complication, that's why I, I, don't, I don't put an interlocking wire or something during the removal or during treatment. But I know that some of our friends are doing so. Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah, actually what I found if there is an infection in charcoal joint. Okay. Hello. If there is yes. an infection, so we do not put any retrograde nail. But if there is no infection and deformities are there, so first of all, we correct the deformities by the elixir of frame. When the deformity is corrected, then we try to put the retrograde nail. It's, it's, it's a good suggestion, yes. Yeah. Yes. Second thing, sir, I'm I'm not seeing that you have not cut the lower portion lateral malleolus. So do you do not go into the joint and debride the joint? Because uh, we have find out if we do not debride the joint, so it leads to the fibrous ankylosis. So yeah. no, nowadays, the, you know, I've changed the method many times. Nowadays, I remove. I go transfibular and I remove a segment of the fibula and debride the joints. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, like in, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. in old cases, this was not the routine, but nowadays, this is my routine. Yeah, yeah. So we have changed the scenario. Now we go, yeah. we transfibular and we debride the thing. This is the best thing to do. Initially, yeah. we have got fibrosis. So yeah. now, when we debride that, we get the bony and colors. Dr. Shah here. Good evening, Dr. Kamal Osni. Good evening. Excellent. Yeah, it was very good. I think the multiple wires that you had put from the heel into the tibia, so many wires, were across the debrided fracture joint between the ankle and subtalar area, which was all infected. So putting a nail, like Dr. Agarwal was saying, and Dr. Ruta Kulkani had also raised a very good question. Putting a nail should be only when there is no infection. Yeah. Now here, if you do not put multiple wires, the idea of putting multiple wires probably is to achieve bony union instead of getting non-union or fibrous union. That is the main idea what Professor Elizabeth had advocated. And I think is that the reason that you have been doing so much multiple wiring across the fracture and debrided site of a Charcot joint? To get an attempt to heal? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. I think it's, um, you know, we, I cannot for wait. Stability. It is for union. It's, yes, it's, union. it's for union. stimulating the union, exactly. So we put a lot of these kind of wires through non-unions in this one just to see that yes, it exactly. unites in a better way, better chance for union. I think Bari yes. is one who also does a lot of it and I have seen in his hospital and I learned it more from him than anybody else to put wires everywhere across the fracture sites, across non-union sites, in all zigzag positions. Uh, professor, uh, how many how many times you had to settle for fibrous ankylosis instead of bony ankylosis? Um, you know, uh, for, um, we consider fibrous ankylosis um, as a failure. But for many patients, they consider it as the real success because they have some movement. And this is the real problem. You know, I saw cases in, in a child. The child has one case of fibrous union, stable fibrous, and the other one was bone union. And the family considered the fibrous union or non-union or whatever it is as real success. They consider the, the really arthrodes joint as a failure of course, because they have sort of this. The most important thing that you have a stable joint. The stability which prevents the development of ulcer infection and things like this. So when we, when we think about the fibrous union or fibrous union, whatever it is, we cannot consider it as a real success, but, but it's far better than having unstable joint. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, please. Hello, sir. I have one more question, basic question. Uh, our Elizaro's method of uh, bone transport is to produce regenerate, to produce excessive blood supply, to allow healing in non-unions and infected non-unions to control infection. Yeah. 
but in charcot joints the major problem are nerve problems neuropathy so how does it help already you said that the limbs have got bonding pulses and good blood supply so blood supply is not the issue so how does elizora help in charcot joint this is a good question in in such cases you see most of the cases we don't do bone transport in most of the cases we don't do bone transport no, we don't need bone transport transfer especially if you if you if you may if you start with bone transport you need such a longer time which sometimes is very difficult with this patient this patient usually has uncontrolled diabetes for for years for 10 years and don't convince me because you operated on the patient the patient his behavior will change to to control his diabetes actually it's uncontrolled diabetes before the operation and uncontrolled diabetes after the operation she has many pen trike infection so i do only bone transport in special situations special situations like if you have a big gap so you need to do lengthening you need to, you cannot leave the patient with 7 cm gap or something like this but increasing the blood supply is not one of the essentials or the basics of treatment of these cases of uh, charcot joint i think he was uh, dr shah was talking about transverse bone transport isn't it transverse vertical yes. osteotomy and transverse yeah like, like, like in ischemic limbs uh, can i can i add yeah. yes sir. yes sir. Uh, can i add can i add Can I yes, talk? Sir. Yes, buddy. <laughs> so in Russian, uh, I I want to I want to add with the uh, uh, Professor Kamal and uh, Hashad and Ruta, please. Uh, at present, I am working a very big diabetic hospital in Dhaka, 800 bed and purely diabetic hospital, so one of the biggest in the Southeast Asia. And what is happening? All the diabetic patients with charcot arthroneuropathy. is suffering with atherosclerosis oh, yes. atherosclerosis before True. doing any kind of surgery you must do the color doppler if you do the color doppler you will see the most of the patients they are suffering with this reduction of the blood flow mm -hmm. and and what dr professor gamal us showed transverse destruction ttt randomly i am doing this this transverse distraction is increasing the nodal circulation and at the same times the distraction in geogenesis neurogenesis dermatogenesis all genesis as soon as you do that the people the patients they are telling doctor now i have a sensation feeling of sensation this is the principle of elizar and that's why uh, in diabetic patient no other alternative way accept this okay. this is what i am getting good results and this is you can go for lengthening but transverse ttt it gives fantastic result in atherosclerotic patient and at the same time when you are doing the uh, charcot arthroneuropathy in the foot six regions in the ankle in the lisfranc joint in the calcaneum and in the midfoot and forefoot everywhere you will get a bony resorption and why you are giving compression of biocompatible thin weights most of the cases you will get the fibrous ankylosis yes. bony ankylosis you will get but it may recur if patient does not follow the recurrence maybe yes. but you will get the fibrous ankylosis instead of any kind of deformity that is a good option filizar you cannot put any kind of plate it not good and that is the beauty of filizar of that you can apply in diabetic patients thank you so much thank you fadal sir thank you sir yeah please sir fadal sir uh, i think uh, professor gamal you may advise uh, Uh, some of uh, your patients to wear uh, uh, an orthotic for a long time to safeguard, especially uh, in outdoors activity. I think it is. I always, I always tell the patient before the operation. Uh, uh, you know, before the operation, you have charcoal joint, and after the operation and the success of the operation, you have also certain charcoal joints. 
<laughs> so we have to protect it again. So there is no difference. It's just we succeeded in solving the problem of you know the the dislocation, the the infection or something. But we started with a charco joint and we end up with a charco joint. So you have to wear some sort of protection, you know, this uh, an air cast or something like this, air walker or something like this to protect the limb. Sure. Thank you. We have a, we have two questions from YouTube. So may I sir? Demand, sir? Yes. <clears throat> The first question is from Dr. Abdul Salam. He is asked that how does transverse transport lead to healing of ulcers in Chakot without pulling the skin with wires? It's, um, it's you know, um, I think Barry discussed this, and I'm going to repeat it, that um, uh, when you do corticotomy transverse and uh, uh, push the, the segment one millimeter per day, there is a huge increase of the, uh, the vasculature of this area, of the distal, even the distal part, which really combat the infection and treat the infection and induce healing of the, of the ulcers. So, and this is the, uh, it's a very important issue with the transverse uh, bone transport. So it's indirect treatment for healing of this resistant ulcer. Remember that most cases with chronic infected ulcers we treat had been treated many, many times by debridement and perhaps all types of antibiotics with no uh, improvement. But with increasing the blood supply, it's, it's really uh, helping the patient to gain coverage of the ulcer. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. We have another question from our first faculty, Dr. Sir Majwai. His first question is, is union and or arthrodesis assured with elezorine chocolate? Plaster room in the So you got the question, sir? Gamal, sir? Yes, uh, what's, the, what's the question? I'm sorry. So Dr. Sir Majwai has asked, uh, is union or arthrodesis assured with elezorine chocolate? Uh, union? Uh, you're in arthrodesis and arthrodesis assured. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we get it's it's really it's arthrodesis of the subtalar or the uh, tibiotalar or uh, or uh, tibiocalcaneal joints. We have uh, arthrodesis. Yes, this is true. By Lazarov. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, another question is: uh, uh, Do patients come back with broken wires? Uh, many times. <laughs> <laughs> many. That's why I, I've told you, I've changed the frame. Right, it's now what, how I do it. I put, you know, in the TV, I have three rings. In each ring, we have three wires. Right. And the upper ring, we have two hydroxyamethyl half pins. Why? And many times you have uh, broken rings because the patient, you know, the orientation during walking is different. And if you have broken wires, you just remove the wire because you have too many additional wires. Great, sir. So is, uh, yeah, one more question. One more question, sir. One more question, sir. From Dr. Ajay. Again, uh, generally patients have increased abnormal mobility. Do we get stability following Elizabeth? Sir, so please unmute, sir. Sorry. Yeah, what's the question? Can you repeat? Yes, sir, I'm doing, sir. Just a second, sir. Uh, Gamal, sir, please unmute. The question is... okay sir. now? Yeah. The question yeah. is, patients have increased abnormality, abnormal mobility. Do we get stability following the Elizero? Yes. Uh, the problem usually after some time was, it was a repeated infections. Uh, some of the wires are broken and you have unstable frame. You have to take the patient to the operating theater again and change the wires and increase them. That's why you see the last frame I've shown you that I have many levels of fixations. In the heel, I put four wires. In the four foot, three or four wires. So if you have a fracture, or if you have a broken wire, if you have infection, you can remove it and still the frame 
is a stable frame. And also I remove the frame after four months. Usually you need six months. And we remove it after six, four, uh, six, four months. I put wires, retrograde, and casting and something. It's very important to think about the stability of the frame in such cases. Thanks a lot, sir. Any more questions? Shall we move can, I ask, can I ask one question? Please, sir. Shamshul. Yes, Dr. Gamal Hosni. You yes, have Shah. used half pin for transfer, uh, transverse uh, thickening of the tibia. Yes. Whereas we use wires. I have never used half pins. Yes. How is, yes, it, yes. More, how is it more different from <laughs> our olive wires to half pins? No, this is between two Eliezer surgeons. Looks why, like why changing. Do you prefer half pins. Shouldn't it looks like changing religion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just for everybody to know that you can do it both ways, either with yes, half yes. pin or. I've, I've learned that from <laughs> you know I was in a visit to my friend Shin and Zhang from China, ah. and actually I've seen them putting half pins, and it was actually easier to put half pins just in on one cortex. So it worked out of me. So I continue this. Yes. Yes. I've learned it from them. Yes. Yeah. So we have a question from Dr. Siddhar Sarman in the chat box. How long do you brace these guys after removal of frame? And what is the incidence of fracture after arthrodesis? If you mean casting or something, I wait for three months. Casting, about three months. But if you put them in a walker or air walker or something, it's for life. As I've told you, it's, it was Charcot joint, and we end up with a Charcot joint again. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. So, after this uh, excellent discussion, Ruta, ma'am, shall we move to the next lecture? Yes, please. Yes, please. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am. So, now I invite our uh, eminent uh, faculty, Dr. Mafahal Baris, sir, for his uh, lecture on talk on uh, Elezor and diabetic food. Baris, sir, please. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, I'd like, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my all Indian friends and uh, Egyptian friends, first of all, I must pay my gratitude to Indian colleagues. They have arranged such very beautiful, you know, Assami conference via webinar. And I must congratulate all the members of the Assami and from my Bangladesh Assami, I would like to congratulate you. And today in this session, I'd like to share my experience for the last two years, particularly I'm working in a diabetic two hospitals. And that's why I can show you my experience, what we are doing in Bangladesh. So these are my places, love to show you all the time. Uh, this is, you know, this is the very big Bardem Bangladesh Institute of Research and Diabetic Endocrinology, you know, Metabolic General Hospital. First one and second one. And this is my center. And you can see diabetic food, DFU, a typically chronic skin ulcers associated with the deep tissue destruction around the foot and ankle region with varying degrees of lower extremity, vasculopathy, and neuropathy. Professor Gamal Ustin showed, talked about the charcot and at the same time ankle and foot. And particularly, I would like to show you the diabetic foot ulcer, which is associated here with a high rate of morbidity, disability, mortality, and psychosocial cost. Now, the most common impaired chronic wound condition is in diabetic mellitus. 8% of population is estimated to suffer type 2 diabetes in 2035. 4% of diabetic patients develop foot ulcer each year, 15% during their lifetime. Diabetic foot ulcers to foot infections 
ulcers or deep tissue destruction caused by peripheral vascular ablations. DFU is one of the most serious and costly chronic complications of diabetes and severe cases can lead to amputation. About 80% of amputation are caused by the foot ulcers. And today, particularly I talk, I'll talk about diabetic foot ulcers. The relative risk of lower extremity amputation in diabetic patients is 40 times higher than that of non-diabetic patients. The five years mortality rate of patient with diabetic foot ulcer associated amputation is about 50%. The mortality rate of Wagner for great diabetic foot patients without surgery was as high as 54%. Significantly higher cost and social burdens. Novel and cost effective management for diabetic foot ulcer is in burning need or question. Now, dear friends, during after treatment, you can see what will get that I told you the TTT and Professor Gamalusi also repeated the TTT. You will get the pain relief, the feeling of warmth in the visible disease limb and quantitative angiography confirmed the formation of rich new vascular networks in the disease limb or ischemic areas. Diabetic foot ulcer, when you do the destruction osteogenesis, it promotes capillary, it's very important, and vascular network regeneration and bone transport technique can significantly improve the microcirculation and soft tissue wound healing. And what are the biological mechanisms? You know that. This is the corticotomy, you know. It's very important. When you are doing, you are reducing the intermediary pressure. You are getting or improving microcirculation of a small vessels in the medullary cavity. It improves arterial blood supply as well as venous drainage. Pain relief and raising the limb skin temperature within 24 hours after TTT surgery. Law of tension stress. Whenever I do a surgery by Lizarov, I keep it in mind the law of tension stress, that is the Elizarov's law. New vascular networks, destruction, distal circulation, including the arterials, venous and lymphatic circulation, and promote the reformation of collateral circulation in the affected limbs. Now you can see, dear friends, triple T. Kurgan evidence suggests that TTT memobilize stem cells systemically, especially promoting recruitment and migration of mesenchymal stem cells towards the damaged tissues, mediating the local inflammatory responses, improving the local microenvironment to facilitate tissue repair or regeneration. Regarding the diabetic foot ulcer, lesion is one of the most crucial pathogenesis of DFU, diabetic vascular lesion. It is characterized by extensive lesions, especially the main vessel calcification and stenosis, which leads to the ulcer, disability, and mortality. You can see here, 44.5% of the subjects were found at risk of DFU, that is diabetic foot ulcer. The risk was higher among the men than women, and among those who lived in the rural areas, that is 45.5% as compared with the urban populations. Primary care physicians and diabetic patients usually have a low degree of awareness of the diabetic vascular lesions. Microvascular lesions, increased blood viscosity, viscosity and blood flow disorder, which are the pathological basis of diabetic food ulcer outcome. Now, here you can see, dear friends, the causes, metabolic disorders, hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, high glycoprotein and other pathogenic factors leads to atherosclerosis, stenosis or obstruction of the vascular lumen and capillary endothelial injuries. You can see the problems of these very, very difficult to solve with the diabetic patients. The diabetic patients likely suffer more severe lower limb ischemia with the foot neuropathy. That was question arised by uh, Professor Harshad. Now you can see DFV is really attributed to peripheral neuropathy, denervation, and sensory abnormalities resulting in infected wound ulcerations such as regates, amphirosis, or abrasions, 
these are very difficult to heal. Diabetic foot ulcer consists of peripheral vascular disease, peripheral neuropathy, and local infection. Peripheral vascular disease and neuropathy lead to ulceration and gangrene, including inducing infection that further aggravate tissue damage in a vicious cycle. Conventional standard methods treatment, you must follow that, dear friends. Principles of development, you must follow. I don't want to details, go for that. And see here, there are three options, three methods. Basic requirements of the surgery. Surgeons should understand the principles of the TTT, the TTT technique, the indications and the contraindications. You can see picture. I will, I will describe you later on. Now, complicated and chronic severe diabetic wounds are the major indications. What are the inclusion criteria you can see? If you go through the classification of type three and above, and with the Texas classification, 3B and above, diabetes foot, which received debridement, dressing change, and standard medical therapy over two months with no obvious improvement. Then you can, uh, this diabetic foot combined with type 2, type 3, and type 4. The patient is mentally stable, must be willing to cooperate with the treatment and the sign of pre operative informed consent. Uh, this is the uh, six grades you can see here of Wagner classification. You must keep it in your mind. Grade one, two, three, and four. Four and five, we are getting from zero to four. You can have a very good result with Ilizarov technique. But when the patient is suffering with the whole foot gangrene, it's difficult to treat. So see here, grade one, grade two, just look. Wagner three grade, four, and finally Wagner grade type five. So dear friends, these are the classifications of the University of Texas, diabetes foot ulcers. You can see here A, B, C, D, and in every grade there is a you know beautifully classified. If you see the A, what you will get in uh, grade zero, grade one, and grade two and grade three, and the uh, contraindications: patients with mental illness, you cannot go for surgery. Patient with the diagnosed other uncontrollable severe diabetic complications by endocrinologist, and patients are intolerant of anesthesia, owing to cardiovascular complications or renal failure in the past three months, or no arterial branches. There is anterior posterior tibial artery or peroneal artery supply beyond the ankle joint. Now you can see here neuropathic and neuroischemic uh, foot rapid progression. You can see here. Vulnerability, neuropathy, immunopathy, infection, ischemia. Now, I would, go, I would like to uh, show you the cases, the efficacy of the assessment. Now, you can see here, dear friends, the current treatment of floating surgical debridement and medication, not all is satisfactory, resulting in gangrene and limb amputation. 50% of wounds do not respond to current treatment. Now, this is, you know, the law of tension says that I told you, these are the uh, varieties of uh, classifications by Wagner. Till today, I have treated these 58 cases here. You can see according to the grade. And now, the, this is the case of diabetic foot ulcer. You can see they came to me, treated elsewhere. Then, this is the one way procedure. You can put the wires. See here, put the olive. And below the olive, you can do the osteotomy. So, see here, this is the one procedure, one ring above, one ring below. Then you just put the olive oil. Below the olive, you can do the osteotomy. This is the one procedure. This is hanged. First procedure is how to do the surgery. See, see, when you are doing surgery, you can put the olive and below the olive you do the osteotomy. So this is the just this is your clip, traction clip. How we are putting the traction clip with olive wires? You can see here. So after putting the traction clip, 
with the olive wires. You just put one ring up, one ring below, and take 12 to 15 centimeter long. See here, and this is the uh, long plate which you must cut with this plate. Yeah. Now proceed to the next procedure. Second procedure, uh, you can do the osteotomy and long, you know, osteotomy. Uh, you can make a four or five small incision, a step incision. Then you can do the osteotomy. After that, you can put the olive wires. This is the second one. So here, and uh, the procedure is almost same. And uh, you can put one ring up, one ring below. And this is the third procedure. You can see here, you just make a small incision in the proximal and do the osteotomy. Another small incision distally and take two osteotomes and go for proximal to the distal or distal to the proximal. So this is the angiogram before or after surgery, you can see. Okay. Now, here you can see, dear friend, this is the diabetic foot ulcer, how we can put the wires. Look at this. This is the one procedure. This is the radiographic view. Redness of the skin, you can see here. And when you are pulling the wires, you will have a healed ulcer. Good, you, you see. At the same time, you can do the osteotomy of the tibia and pulling the wires. Now I'd like to share with some cases. You can see here, this is a gangrene, distal part of the foot to diabetic patient. Diabetic ulcer with gangrene of the foot to of a 28 years male treated elsewhere. Came to my place. Then you can see what I have done. This is the left side. You can see the dead with the right ankle and foot after application of the Rizarum. This is after one month follow up. This is C after two months follow up. And this is the clinical appearance of the foot heel, dulcer ulcer, and cured of foot to gangrene only after three months follow up. Now, case two, you can see. This is a diabetic patient who was suffering four years of NHU, non-healing ulcer. Came to my place for the last lot of years, you know, he was taking only antibiotics. But with this ulcer, you can help only with the desirable apparatus. See what I've done? Ready view of the right angle and foot after application of the Lizarab. I have distracted the wires. You can see. Now you can see the dorsal of the foot with the heat ulcer after one month of Lizarab application. Next. Now you can see heat ulcer. This is before and this is after six months follow up, fully cured. Next. Next. Great to ulcer, you can see here, very big. Treated elsewhere, amputation of the distal phalanx. And you can see during treatment, and this is the uh, after treatment you can see here. Okay, now dear friends, you can see diabetic foot ulcer, bilateral sole of the foot. See the rocker bottom foot, 45 years old male, came to me with this. And what I have done, see, TTT was done. And I have done the arthrodesis of the midfoot, least front joint. Now see the healing process of the right foot after two months treatment. 
Dear friends, now I'd like to draw your attention regarding this diabetic foot ulcer. Young gentleman came to me. I have done the debridement and then see, I have done the TTT of the diabetic foot ulcer. Look at the left side and look at the right side. The osteotomy of the longitudinal, this TTT. And then see, this is the beauty of Elizar of after doing the surgery, healing process is going on. See the sole of the foot and see the right side. This is before left side and this is only after two months follow up. You can see next. Now you compare after two months left side, young chap and now you see the right side, right foot. Here, this is the right foot. You can see this is the right foot, sole and dorsum of the foot. Now you can compare after doing the TTT, after removal of the Elizar apparatus. Beautifully healed by this TTT technique. Now, oh, this is a very severe, you can see, ankle and great toe with diabetic foot ulcer. Came to me with this situation. How can you help? Look at these tendons. Everything is visible. Look at this. And TTD and well, uh, skin grafting was done. Next. And last case, probably this is diabetic foot ulcer. We can put a great toe. Again, I have done the TTT. And look at this gradual sequential after a few days. Next. See how healed after doing the TTT. Destruction in eugenesis, neurogenesis, and this is tissue genesis and dermatogenesis. Next. Next. So, dear friends, I would like to share you with the charcoal, arthroneuropathy, osteomyelitis, the calcadian, see, so severe. With the lady, now, Healing of the, you can see after doing the TTT, see the TTT here, here you can see the TTT. This is transverse destruction. This is transverse destruction. And this is the healing process is going on. And this is the heal after removal of the apparatus from this situation to this situation after doing the TTT. You see the diabetic patient, the skin condition is always bad because there is a problem with the skin, problem with the muscles, problems with the nerves, problem with the vessels. And this is after treatment. Next. And this is, see, probably this is the last case. 70 years old, male, page 72, diabetic foot ulcer with a dry skin. Look at this X-ray at the left side. And then what I have done, again, TTT. After doing the TTT, see, within a very short time, one and a half months, look at the ulcer healed. The uh, situation is totally changed. So diabetic food is rapidly progressive and complex natural history. Patient is very vulnerable. Care should be easily accessible, specialized, and multidisciplinary treatment uh, should be applied. And in my conclusion, dear friends, I'd like to draw your attention regarding the TTG technique for DFU. Have successfully reconducted more. We have we have we are doing a lot of cases by doing this TTG uh, in our routine cases. TTG technique can significantly enhance diabetic ulcer healing, increase the limb salvage rate, and reduce the DFU recurrence rate. But TTT is not the 100% effective for severe DFU treatment. Many complications are attributed to lack of clear clinical guidance and training for the correct surgical protocols and post-operative management. TTT surgery should be performed with minimal invasive fashion through a small skin incisions, meticulous corticotomy, purposely designed Elizar fixator to ensure standard surgical procedure and post-operative management.
and this is also you can see i have a publication of diabetic food ulcer in american smedcape journal these are my all uh, asamikon 18 and indian fellows why it is are of uh, the main reasons behind the complications of lizar of you know inadequate knowledge improper technique violation of the original russian principle lack of skill intelligent meticulous follow up lack of passion and hybridization i always show my respect to the great scientist talented doctor gifted innovator creator of the apparatus and the method of transosseous osteosynthesis academician gabriel abramovich lizar Now this is the man, Professor Shigeru, who died six months back due to COVID. I learned a lot of things from this gentleman from Kurgan Center. So these are all di- not non, you know, all complicated diabetic and non-diabetic patients in my center. Thank you so much for your kind attention. And finally, what I've shown you, this is the evidence, this is the science, and of course the surgical skill of the patient. and we can do by this wonderful technique and we are doing in my country a lot of cases diabetic and non diabetic and infected non infected all the cases thank you so much for your uh, uh, kind attention and again i would like to draw the attention of the my indian colleagues especially the president asami and shamsulu that we are keeping touch all the time thank you very much again for giving me the chance to talk on on this forum thank you again Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, so uh, Professor Bari, it was a fantastic uh, uh, lecture. The, the results are mind-blowing, really. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. May, may I uh, ask one basic question? Your vertical osteotomy is on lateral side or medial side? you can do whatever you like i am doing because in some of your cases i saw it on lateral and lateral side uh, medial yeah. side you can do it also the lateral side so which both, is better both sides you can do eh? which side if you go better? for if you go for the medial side it is okay it is good okay you can do lateral side also all right and i am telling so both, you really both the this results is of both are same according to which all, do you prefer all, almost both are same this is Bari, which one you prefer medial or lateral i prefer if i see uh, uh, i need to do a long then i go for medial side because that that's why that the, the cortex of the tibia from the medial side is thick and you can move a very good you know uh, uh, bulk of the uh, tibia from the medial side it is easier it But is easier the pro- problem with medial side is there are no muscle attachments on medial side whereas lateral mm. side is more vascular because of good muscle attachment so all, uh, uh, yeah i i i i yeah, guess your yeah, uh, question so uh, you can do whatever the results is good almost the same okay. in medial okay. level okay. thank you i think dr fadel wants to say something sir. Other, sir. please sir. <laughs> go ahead excuse me I, it is not a question I just uh, ask you to excuse me because I was obliged to follow your uh, very interested lecture dear uh, Barry uh, mm-hmm. so I I am obliged to drive maybe uh, 120 kilometers to go for my appointment uh, previously uh, commitment okay so, thank you thank you so much thank you thank you for coming so thank you for may we meet inshallah again in India yeah. and then in your Congress, inshallah, Ruta. And yes, sir. Friends. Yes. Yeah, Definitely. Dr. Bari. Good luck. Yes. Thank Can you. I ask one question, Dr. Bari? Uh, yes, yes. Cordially, yeah, please. Actually, we are doing the by jig, just uh, percutaneous drilling of that. So, we have done the uh, angiography also. That gives a give good, good results also. Drilling of right. the tibia by jig pattern. Yes, so, you can do that. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. but there is no chance of the fracture of the tibia in some of the cases there was a complication of the fracture of the portion so we are doing only the drilling of that so good results are we are getting even uh, when you are doing you know longitudinal osteotomy yeah it is better to wait for 10 to 12 days long yeah. then you go for two times a day destruction 
instead of three or four times. It depends on your case. And you go for distraction for 25 to 30 days, one month. And really, after five or six months, if you should do the angiogram again. That is uh, not angiogram telling you there is a color Doppler. You will have a lot of changes, previous one and and after the surgery. And in every patient, whenever I'm doing this kind of, I do the color Doppler obviously because I must have documentation. The uh, reduction flow of the blood is very, very minimal in case of all the diabetic patients. Yeah. That's why, and you can compare after five or six months. Very fantastic result. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, one more question. Yes. When we do a vertical osteotomy, mm. one of the patients, it was a long osteotomy, that osteotomized fragment itself broke. Yes. Right. So now we are doing two. Yes. One small one at the top with two wires or three wires. We leave a gap and do one more at the bottom with two or three wires. So yes. that complication of breakage of that window which is being opened does not occur. But you get the same results. Yes. Right. The big Correct. bump that you get on the medial side on the tibia also is less. Mm. Whenever you do osteotomy, if you believe it not, two days back, I have done one PVD case in both letters, PVD, peripheral vascular disease. Huh. There was a swelling big. My clinical assistant, he phoned me, sir, no swelling, I, I'm looking. As soon as we have done the autopsy, one day later, no swelling <laughs> and temperature. This is the beauty of doing the longitudinal corticotomy. That is a vertical osteotomy. You know, not cortical, vertical osteotomy. And I really <laughs> tell you, you can try, you can do it, and good results. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Sir, I want your comment about uh, multiple drill holes, as uh, Dr. Agrawal sir has pointed out. So, uh, have you compared just making multiple drill holes versus vertical osteotomy, the results? Did you have good results with just drilling holes? Because in my hands, I have tried it in Burgess disease, in peripheral yes. vascular disease, and it has not worked. Not work. Drilling holes has not worked, but vertical osteotomy has always worked. Yes. So I want to know your experience, sir, and Dr. Agrawal's also. Yes, my, my, uh, Ruta, I'm telling yes. you, yeah. vertical osteotomy it is thousand times better than this multiple reload. Absolutely. Yes, that is, uh, uh, yes, yes, that is the, uh, I've seen, I have the comparative. This one and this one. Even then, if you do vertical osteotomy, wait for 10 to 12 days, not in other cases. In uh, corticotomy, longitudinal, we are doing, we are waiting for four, five, six, or seven days. But here, if you wait for vertical 10 to 12 days, yes. outcome is very good. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. And we have one question from you to me. From YouTube. Yes, um, so the first question is from Dr. Nilesh Kashnerkar. What is the incidence of recurrence of DFU after TTT? Yes. So I, 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 uh, starting, the, I have told you, you must follow the instruction. Diabetic patient, before doing any surgery, you must tell them 3D. Diet, discipline, and drug. You must advise. If they, if, if they don't follow your instruction, May uh, recur, but particularly I cannot tell you the what is the incidence rate in my country. I, I cannot tell you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. And this, again, a question, sir. What is the role of diet in bone recovery in this case, sir? What is the role of diet? Diet, sir. Diet. Diet, 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 sir. Food, food, diet, oh, diet. Anna. Oh, diabetic patient <laughs> always three D <laughs> diet. If you take every day sugar, 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 then oy, if your diabetic rises above 12, 11.1, you must think yourself. Sometimes you can get 12, 13, that is another thing. But constantly, if it, is, it rises, it will not help you. At the same time, you must tell your patient all the time. You must take your diet, shabji, shabji, vegetable all the time. And you must walk for every day for 40 minutes. And you must follow the instruction of the doctors, taking the drugs, vegetables, 
and routine life, discipline life. That is the uh, uh, for the very good for the diabetic patients. Okay. Yes, sir. Ma'am, any more questions? Agarwal, sir. What about the diabetic curing diet? Keto, keto diet? Oh, keto, don't believe. No, hey, you don't believe keto don't diet? Believe keto. You'll die. Don't You're not try? See, oh, see uh, uh, Professor Harshad, in our diabetic hospital, very big, every Tuesday, uh, 53, you know, uh, uh, departments there. Huh. Uh, one of the professors, he was delivering lecture regarding the, the keto. Hmm. Keto, this is not a good. This is not a good method. Don't do that. You will die. You just follow the normal 3D. That is enough. Why will you die? You will die because this is the business. This is for the business. Don't follow Actually, that. Actually, keto diet is dangerous. It in is diabetes. natural food. They, they, they can land up in keto acidosis. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That is there. That they will be monitoring, no? Whatever it is, they will be monitoring all the time. No. Huh? So, you don't want to believe. You're gonna, and I don't believe. Keto. Right. You I go, think you can you, you can come out you can come out with a topic of Elizaro and diabetes. <laughs> it's very good. It's yeah. very good. Very good. How Elizaro helps in diabetes and uh, oh see Harshad, I'm telling whether, you whether see you infection know. increases diabetes. When you put Elizaro, it decreases diabetes. That is what you need to prove. Yes. How it decreases and all that, please catch hold of your endocrinologist, physicians. Uh, you see, we have a, a food care. For you to write. Yes, I'm telling you, in India also, we have a food care center here in WD Hospital. Before, before jo I, I myself doing there, before joining me here in diabetic food center, the general surgeon, they are cutting all this, you know, drinking, dressing, and this, and now we are doing with this. It is our technique. Destruction mm. in geogenesis, destruction tissue genesis, dermatogenesis, neurogenesis, all tissue genesis. Thank you very much. No sugar genesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank good. You. Bari, as usual, excellent. Dr. Gamal Osni and Bari. Absolutely fascinating Amare, talk, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, we don't have any question. Uh, shall we conclude? We can, yeah. So, uh, concluding remarks from you, ma'am. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think Professor Hosni has already left, but yes. uh, Professor Bari, it was really enlightening uh, talk. Thank you very much. You are a great teacher. And we are looking forward to meet you in Asamicon 2022 in Pune and listen to more of your talk. Thank okay. you. So thank you very much, all of you, all the thank you again. members thank you. on the panel. Thank you. Thank you all of you and have yeah. a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Congrats, Dr. Ruta and all. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Arshad, okay, Ruta oh, and sir, all. Congrats. Yeah, Agarwal Agarwalji. Yeah, thank you very much. Have you heard now? We are off record now. Agarwalji. Yeah. Okay. We are not. Huh? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Shamshul. Not yet. Uh, offline, sir. Uh, not yet closed. No, but it is officially off. Recording ban karna. Live recording or I. Just, just, sir. Uh, <laughs> everybody will be back again next Saturday for. Uh, uh, talks on uh, the role of hexapod and long mode de uh, deformities by Dr. Victor and Dr. Ismail Hamuda. Stay tuned, everybody. Good night for now.